Hi, this is Nikki from Thread Collective, and today I wanted to talk to you about weaving shuttles. There are so many weaving shuttles available, all slightly different, but do somewhat the same job. So today I wanted to show you the array of weaving shuttles that we have available here at Thread Collective, but to also um, give you an idea of what the differences are, how to use them, and what on earth bobbin, quill, and pern really are. They're questions I get asked almost daily. So hopefully this video will explain some of the things that you've been wanting to ask. Um, if I haven't covered something, please feel free to drop it in the comments and I'll be sure to answer it for you. So to start with, I wanted to talk about a weaving shuttle that I'm sure everyone has seen and it's this the stick shuttle. The stick shuttle comes with most of the rigid heddle looms that we sell. Um, it also is common in frame loom weaving. You can see that it has just got the notches out on each end. You wrap your weft, um, you pass it through either through a frame loom or you pass it through um, when you're weaving and you just beat as normal. Now a stick shuttle comes in a range of different sizes. This is a natural from Ashford. They come in lacquered from Schacht, um, all different lengths. You can get one to suit exactly what you're looking for. We also have a Ashford wavy shuttle. Now this one's a little bit fun. It just helps give you a little bit more of a um, interest line when you're weaving. So you still wrap your weft as normal, but when you use this to beat instead of your standard beater, and you can use this to create the design lines in your work. We have a poke shuttle from Bluster Bay. Now these guys are great for when you're doing inlay work or if you've just got a small project. They're a little bit, um, they don't hold as much weft as your standard stick shuttle, but they are fantastic to use. They feel lovely in the hand. Um, and if you were just wanting to add a pop of color here and there, these guys are great. The next shuttle that I wanna to talk to you about is a belt shuttle. Now a belt shuttle is used on an inkle loom. So the inkle loom, the weft needs to be packed down very, very tightly. So you can see that the edges look very similar to the boat shuttle. You do wrap your weft around, but then it's got this tapered edge on the end and the tapered edge is used to help pack down the weft as you're weaving. So you, an inkle loom doesn't have a beater like most other looms. You actually use this and it really helps you get the weft right into the, like tightly into place. So that is a belt shuttle. Then we move on to probably the most common uh, weaving shuttles that are available and they're the standard boat shuttles. Now a boat shuttle can be used on a rigid heddle loom, a floor loom, a table loom, a sayori loom. They're very common. They come in a range of different sizes, different styles, different timbers and shapes. Now this is a Bluster Bay closed bottom boat shuttle. Now you can see that the weft comes out from the side and a boat shuttle generally uses a bobbin. So a bobbin has, um, it's like a plastic tube and it's got a flange on each end. So that as you're winding it, it, the weft doesn't go off the edges. Now you don't just have to use a bobbin in a boat shuttle. You can also use a quill. So a quill is a cheaper alternative. It is generally made from cardboard, but I have seen people use old plastic straws if you can still manage to recycle them. Now, these guys, um, you do have to be a little bit more careful when you're winding your bobbin because you can get the weft slipping off the edge and that's not gonna be nice when you're weaving. The one difference between a bobbin and a quill is that some of the slimline um, shuttles that are available do need to have the um, quills used because the bobbin flange is just too high. So it really depends on the shuttle that you're using. Now, I'm just going to put that to the side. So when we're talking about boat shuttles, we had the closed bottom. You can also have an open bottom. The open bottom is much lighter because you're not getting the excess timber on the edge. One thing that you do have to be more mindful of with an open bottom shuttle is not overfilling the weft. If you can imagine that you've got your shuttle, your bobbin in there, you don't want the bobbin so full that it's actually protruding underneath here and then causing friction on your weaving as you're, um, as you're using it. So a 
open bottom boat shuttle is fantastic to use when you want a lightweight shuttle, um, but you do have to be careful about over overfilling your bobbin. The closed bottom shuttles are great um, because they are a little bit heavier and you don't, you can throw them through and it just makes it a bit easier I find to use a closed bottom shuttle when I'm weaving, but it's all a personal preference. Now, <coughs> excuse me, when we are talking about boat shuttles, they do come in a whole range of different sizes. This is a Leclerc boat shuttle. It's huge compared to the little one from Shaft. You can see that. It's got a 15 centimeter bobbin in it. Um, it is not too heavy. It, the Bluster Bay is still about the same weight as this guy. So it all comes down to the timbers that are used as well. But what this one would be fantastic for is if you were doing um, rag, rag weaving or something that you needed some lots of weft, you could fill this one up a lot more than one of the smaller bobbins um, and you wouldn't have to do so many bobbin changes. So this is another form of boat shuttle. Then we have an interesting looking fella from Louette. This is called the Flying Dutchman. And this one's a bit different. You can see this tapered um, metal that goes up over the top. This gently lifts the warp threads as it goes through the shed. The weft comes out of here and it just um, helps give it an even delivery of yarn. Um, this is a very unique looking shuttle and it's the only one that I've seen that lifts the warp as it glides through. That's the Louette Flying Dutchman. Next, we have double boat shuttles. So we've got one from Leclerc and one from Shaft. Both very similar, but this gives you the ability to have two different colors, a thick, a thin, um, or even if you just wanted to double. So if you were using a fine yarn and you wanted to double it, you wouldn't have to try and wind your bobbin with the two in hand. You could actually wind them singly and just have them come in out of your shuttle as a double when you're weaving. So these are the double. They come in very handy for a whole range of applications. Next, we go into a variation on the boat shuttle, and they're more of the slimline Swedish shuttles, or just a straight slimline. But this is a Swedish shuttle. Um, it, it uses a quill because it is a little bit shallower, but it's great for um, those projects where you don't, or the looms that don't give you great sheds. So if you've got a small and narrower shed, these slimline shuttles are fantastic. So that's um, a Swedish shuttle. And we also have the Swedish shuttle from Bluster Bay. And we have got an open bottom Swedish shuttle from, uh, not an open bottom shuttle from Bluster Bay. This isn't called a Swedish, it's just an open bottom. You can see there. The Swedish shuttles um, have these beautiful lines to them, as you can see. Okay. So moving on, next we're going into more of your rug making. Now this is a um, ski shuttle from Bluster Bay. There is other brands that do a similar sort of ski shuttle. It's really good for really bulky yarns when you are doing rag rugs. So the alternative to a ski shuttle um, would be a rag shuttle. This guy's from Shat. You can see again, very similar. Um, in terms of being able to have thick yarn through your project. So that is a rag shuttle. Finally, we are moving to more of the upper end um, production weaving for uh, table lo uh, floor looms and maybe even some of the dobby looms. So this is a Bluster Bay end feed shuttle. Um, it's different from the boat shuttles I'm just going to grab a boat shuttle again for you. Can you see the boat shuttle? The weft comes out the side. Now, this is an end feed shuttle. The weft delivery comes at the end, and the weft is wound onto what we call a pern. So the yarn goes through a tensioner device. This is a Honex tensioner, and it actually means that when the yarn comes through, it's always let go at the correct tension. You can adjust this with a small... Um, Allen key that comes with your shuttle. 
So this is a Bluster Bay Honex shuttle. And we also have a Bluster Bay End Feed hook shuttle. Now a hook shuttle um, has the benefits of being able to use hand spun yarn or yarns that have got different thicknesses. This, the Honex really needs to have an even, um, an even yarn to be able to come through that Honex device nice, nicely. Whereas this allows you to um, wrap your yarn back and forth over these hooks until you get the right tension and it can have some different variation in your yarn sizes there. Okay, and finally, the fly shuttle. Now, this is a Louette fly shuttle. Again, it uses a pern. Um, one thing about the perns that are different from the bobbins is that you do wind them from the end. So rather than a bobbin that you wind back from, I'm just going to pop this one down. So a bobbin you wind back forth, back forth until it's full. Like you go from one end to the other. With a pern, you actually, and I'm just going to take this pern out of here. With a pern, you actually start at one end and you just sort of go back and forth and you slowly fill up your pern like that. So that as it's coming off, then it just comes off the end. So that's the main difference between a pern and a bobbin. You do need to have a special winder to wind a pern easily. It can be done using a hand drill or a bobbin winder, but it is much better if you have a pern winder. So going back to the fly shuttles, the fly shuttles generally all have some sort of tensioner device in their end feed. Um, the other difference that you'll find from um, a standard Honex or other end feed shuttle is these metal tips on the end. Now the metal tips are used in the fly box. So this guy gets, um, when you're using a fly shuttle, you have a fly box attached to your loom and it just is used with a swing or some sort of other device that will actually tell the shuttle to go back to the other side. Um, they're used in production weaving, makes weaving very, very quick, but you do need to have the right loom and the right fly shuttle set up to use these guys. But that is a fly shuttle. So we've talked about all of the different weaving shuttles that we have available. Probably not all, I'm sure I've got others available. Um, the different types between the differences between a bobbin, pern, and quill. Uh, I will do a video in the future about winding the different bobbin, per, wind, bobbins, quills, and perns. But look, I hope that helps you understand the different styles of weaving shuttles that we have available. Um, if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you've got any other suggestions on what do you want me to go through and explain about the different weaving tools um, that are available, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye for now.